Okay. Um, so this is the House Health Care Committee again. It's Friday, March 12th. It's a few minutes after nine. Um, we are going to turn our attention again to House Bill 210, uh, which we're referring to as the health equity or the health equity bill. And uh, in the interim since yesterday, we've had, um, we've received a new draft in which uh, our draft person, Katie McGlynn, has incorporated at our request and at the suggestion of several members, has incorporated into the findings sections all of the references, uh, the documents where the points of uh, findings are uh, coming from. And also, Representative Chena had offered and has now put before us a document which actually provides a kind of a compendium of the resources uh, that are used to document the findings and even more wonderful uh, actual links to the, to the direct, direct links to the documents. So my suggestion is that we uh, just familiarize ourselves with those findings and, and not try to wordsmith the findings at this point, but I think we should, we should familiarize ourselves and see what, see what, uh, what Representative McLean, what Legislative Council Katie McLean has done on our behalf. And then um, maybe Brian, you can give us a quick walk through of what you're, you put together. Uh, and then let's just, we'll just take next steps. Uh, so with that, Colleen, do you have the, I think it might be good to have it on, a, on the screen in front of us. If you could put up, oh, and also there, there, it will be posted. Uh, I see that Katie has received back from the, ed the editors and everybody knows that after alleged council rights language, it goes through uh, professional editors who work for legislative council who then note any changes that have to be made to bring it into conformance with, the, uh, with any standards that may have been missed or, or frankly spelling errors and the kinds of things that we all do. Uh, sure. so would, you like me to, would you like me to put the bill up and then I can scroll through it as you walk through it since I know it with the material? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. That'd right. be great. Yeah, you and Colleen, whichever who can do that, put it on the screen. I, I think you have, to, you have to be host or co-host to if do that. You I think. enable me to do that. I'm just going to make sure it's it's like not my to-do list that you see and that it, like, yeah, let's not do that, Brian. <laughs> it would traumatize you. Um, we, won't have, we won't have time for that. <laughs> All of that. Um, this looks like it. If it's not it, sorry. Okay, this is it. This looks like the most recent. It says 454 3.1. I just want to confirm that is the one from email. Um, pretty sure it is, but that's the one that's on the website. Yeah. Okay, that's it. All right. So I can scroll as you speak, Chair. Okay, so let's just uh, scroll down, and again, okay, we're, I'm just I'm just going to be noting the changes rather than us trying to delve into them deeply. But um, yeah, so so we we're, again we're we're seeing that uh, references are being made to the Department of Health's 2018 state health assessment, and we we have actually had testimony about that health assessment from the. Department of Health, if you recall, in earlier testimony before our committee. And that's when we, in part, discovered that our the, this bill was completely in alignment with uh, health disparities that the Department of Health had uh, reported in their health assessment. And then again, we, have the, we see that there's uh, 2018 Department of Health Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System Report, which is the source of the next section of findings. I mean, I wish Katie were here because she she could comment further. But I is this helpful to do this, or is this just not? I helpful? see a hand, um, Chair. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. Representative Peterson. Mm -hmm. Let me mute. Get off it. Uh, the, the one, what I did when I saw this uh, health behavioral risk uh, factor surveillance system report, I went through it mm -hmm. and I pulled off the percentages, okay? I'm not For sure instance, what you mean when you say the percentages. The, the, the actual stats, okay, the, the, I shouldn't say percentage, the stats associated with what's shown here. For instance, A, statistically less likely to have a personal doctor. 
Yeah, it's, you know, when you look at the numbers, it's it's accurate, but it's not. It's 80, Vermont as a whole, 86% have a doctor. People of color, 77%. Yeah, this statistically less, but I, I just, this whole first section bothers me in that we, we're going over so much, so many statistics. I, I, I don't know why we would have a bill that has that much stuff in it. Well, typically yeah. we wouldn't, but to be honest, but because this is, uh, trying to provide information to folks who otherwise may not have had occasion to review this kind of material. I think the intent is to try to put information in front of folks uh, to frankly uh, demonstrate that there in fact are statistically significant uh, health disparities. Okay, so let's, let's look at that personal doctor. Okay. Um, can, I, can I just interrupt for a minute and say that sure. what, what I'm suggesting is that we not at this point okay. delve into the specifics of it. Uh, All right. Maybe, I mean, to be quite honest, um, I mean, y you have expressed your concern about the bill in general. Right. Uh, and, and I hear, and I think we've heard your concern and we hear your concern. Uh, what I feel like is important is that at this point in time, I'm, I'm willing to actually hear your concerns, but I need to make, make room for the bill itself uh, to be understood by the committee and to look at how we, if there are basic structural changes within the bill that need to be thought about before we uh, have a debate about whether one finding or another is sufficiently satisfactory to you or to someone else, because we could get lost there very quickly, and I'm not willing to have us do that. All right, thank you, Chair Lipper. Yeah. Um, can I just say a quick thing about the findings that I understand that they are pretty extensive and detailed, um, and we really felt it was important. Um, to have a case um, grounded in data and grounded in um, what the state has seen over the last few years. And, and it, but in addition to that, I, I'm just gonna be honest that when you're a member of a minority group, um, whatever that group may be, it might even be a religious minority in some situations, that often you have to work harder to have the majority listen. You know, And I, I think that we felt like we had to really make our case um, because um, people aren't hearing us, you know? So I think that's part of why there's so much detail is we felt like we really needed to sh prove, you know, why we were asking for something. So I'll just leave it at that. But that's part of why there's so much detail is there's, we, 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 we face extra scrutiny, so. Yeah. Katie's here now, by the way. Yes, Katie, thank you for finding your way to us. We appreciate it. Um, so Katie, maybe I could ask you to simply review with us the documentation that you've integrated into the findings again, without, uh, and as I suggested to Representative Peterson, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find this balance. I'm, not, I'm wanting to have people voice their concerns, but it, there's clear, it's clear that we, the majority of this committee wants to move forward. I do want to hear what you have to say, Representative Peterson. And the point right now for me is that if we, we could get lost in debating every single finding here and never get to the underlying uh, proposal of the bill. And so that's where I want to put our attention first. And that may seem backwards. I, I get that, but I think it's, I think it's a challenge that we have to face right now in terms of the time that's in front of us. So Katie, would you help, would you, would you help us see where you've integrated the documentation? Sure. sure. Um, so in subdivision one, um, there is a statement about um, um, 
Vermont residents experiencing bar barriers to the equal enjoyment of good health based on race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, and disability status. And this came from the introductory language and um, also from the results of the 2018 state health assessment. Um, so that is that finding. And then in subdivision two, we move on um, to non-white Vermonters are, and there's um, five or six statements there. And that came again from the 2018, um, not again, the 2018 Department of Health Behavior Risk Factor Surveillance System report. This is um, quite a large report that breaks down um, data by different population groups and also um, looks at different risk factors and different diseases. Um, so that's where that came from. And you'll see this particular source again and again, because a lot of the data came from this report from the health department. The next finding is subdivision three. Um, so this information is about, um, was produced by the Department of Mental Health. They completed an analysis um, in their statistics unit that um, is just broadly called race data VPCH admissions, so Vermont Psychiatric Care Hospital admissions. Um, and that was the data from May 1st, 2019 to April 30th, 2020 about um, the populations present in the Vermont um, Psychiatric Care Hospital. In subdivision four, um, this one was a little trickier to write just because there are um, are multiple statements in it. And I wanted to make sure I was attributing all the statements to the correct place. So we have a broad introductory statement. Um, and then we go on to support that statement with different findings. So in the second sentence on line nine, um, there is a, a data brief um, created by the Department of Health in December, 2020 about, um, it, it was entitled COVID among Vermonters who are black indigenous and people of color and, and BIPOC and um, that was, I want to just emphasize that BIPOC was part of the title of that document, which is why I included it. I know there's um, kind of questions as to whether that's the right term to use, but that's why it's included here. Um, so that data briefing provided a lot of this data um, on COVID and different population groups impacted by um, COVID. So the statistic that one in every five COVID cases in Vermont are among um, Black, Indigenous, and people of color, um, even though these Vermonters make up approximately 6% of Vermont's population. That came from that document. And then on line 14, you see I have, according to the same data brief, that refers back to the Department of Health data. Um, and then in the next sentence, um, I, I because we were still talking about the incidence rate, I didn't say again, according to that data brief, I assumed that it could be inferred there, but if the committee would like that added in there, I'm happy to, again, write the statement according to the same data brief. And some in subdivision B, um, I started off this new subdivision by saying, according to the Department of Health data brief, referring to the same data brief on COVID, the December 2020 data brief, and this gave us information about COVID cases among non-white Vermonters tend to be younger um, than for white Vermonters and that the average age of persons testing positive is 33 for non-white Vermonters versus the average age of 46 for white Vermonters. Um, in subsection C, um, this sentence is a little confusing because I have two different sources that I'm using. So um, is this where it was? Yes. So <laughs> in sub, Section C, while according to the um, 2018 Behavior Risk Factor Surveillance System, so that's the, um, the report that was referenced up above, there are not statistical differences in the rates of pre existing conditions um, such as diabetes, lung disease, cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease among white and non white Vermonters. The data brief, the 20, December 2020 data brief, indicates there are disparities in the rates of pre-existing conditions among Vermonters. And as stated in the brief, the pre-existing conditions um, among COVID cases is 19.4% for non-white Vermonters and 12.1% for white Vermonters, 
And according to that same data brief, the December 2020 data brief, this suggests that non-white Vermonters are at higher risk of exposure for COVID due to their type of employment and living arrangements. Um, and again, there's a statistic here. And at the end of that last sentence, line 17 and 18, as stated in the Department of Health's December 2020 data brief. So then we move on to um, the section pertaining to adults with disabilities. And this language um, just sets up that the source for all of these statements is the 2018 Vermont Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System Report. And then I think you could scroll down to six. Thank you. Yep, there we go. Um, six pertains to adults who are LGBTQ. And again, I have this language according to the 2018 Vermont Behavior Risk Factor Surveillance System Report. And that again applies to all the statements in this subdivision. That brings us to section seven. Seven was the new subsection that was added um, since, since the bill was introduced. Um, and this is the language pertaining to youth who are LGBTQ. And this source for all of this data was um, the 2019 Youth Risk Behavior Survey that was conducted in Vermont. So you'll see that that applies to all of the statements in subdivision seven. And then if you scroll down, um, we get to eight. Um, and eight came from um, testimony, written testimony. I, well, I think it was presented also, but it was also written in the committee record um, in 2018. So this is preliminary data from the 2018 state health assessment that was presented to the House Committee on Healthcare by the Department of Health in January, 2018. And this is um, posted in the committee's record on the website. And so all of that data came from that presentation that's posted on the committee's website. And then um, this is the last finding, subdivision nine. Um, so Vermont's 2018 indicates that social determinants of health are underlying contributing factors. Um, so both the introductory language in the state health assessment and then the findings and the assessment indicate um, that these are factors contributing to the um, foregoing health inequities. And then if you, well, you don't have to scroll down. In subdivision A, each, each of these subdivisions has its own source. So according to the Vermont Housing Financing Finance Agency, um, just Vermonters own their own homes whereas 72% of white Vermonters own their own home. And then there's the national number um, in subsection, subdivision B, according to the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, the median household income for black Vermonters and for white Vermonters. Uh, in subdivision C, um, this information came from the US Census Bureau um, in 2018, 23.8% of black Vermonters were living in poverty while 10.7% of white Vermonters we're living in poverty. Um, and then in addition, according to the Vermont Housing Agency, 57% of Black Vermonters earn less than 80%. Um, sorry, <laughs> the page is jumping and I can't follow it. Um, let's see. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm in the last finding of subdivision C and that last sentence comes from the Vermont Housing Finance Agency. And then if you scroll down, please. Um, subdivision D is the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, and there's um, a definition that's used, housing problems. That definition comes from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban, Urban Development. And in subdivision E, um, this data comes from a called the 2020 Report and Time Count that was produced by the Vermont Coalition to End Homelessness and the Chittenden County Homeless Alliance. So those are the sources that were used and are now integrated. And I apologize because I'm supposed to be in another committee. So I'm going to hop off in about two minutes. Okay. I know we're all doing many things today. Thank you, Katie. For hop off for the floor. Yeah, we're going to be leaving for the floor very shortly. So th thank you, Katie. I think what we'll do next is just, just in the interest of having it in front of us, Brian, would you just... Yep share your, the document you put together. Yes, and one thing I'll tell you is, you know, this is sort of the, 
did something just go wrong? I think so. Hold on, sorry. Um, this is what I'm saying. I, you think you click on something and then the shopping list shows up. So this- That was the right one. Oh, it, it was? It's showing me the bill on my screen. Oh, maybe it's because I'm on the wrong window. Do you, so you yeah, see- it's, Yeah, we see I'm it. seeing- okay, Great. I'm, so I'm seeing your listing One thing resources. I will say is that we need to add one more source to this because that source about LGBTQ youth is not on this list. So we miss, I missed that last night. So I okay. will add it and amend it for the record. Um, but what you can see what we did here is I went through all of, um, all of the citations and I eliminated duplication and made a list. It's sort of like a bibliography for a paper yeah. or something. And yeah. you can see that each source we used is here. The ones where we can find a link, where mo almost every single one we could find a link. And then at the end, you can, there's a see also section because this is information that informed the bill but didn't necessarily make it into the findings. And so I thought, why not include it so people could learn more about the disparities? Um, there's some really interesting information there. But I will add um, to this, I will add that Youth Risk Behavior Survey resource at some point today and make sure it's on the record. And so, he, so people could feel free, um, whether it's in the com committee or in the community, to go explore the direct sources through this resource. Great. I appreciate you doing that. Um, and it honestly wasn't hard because we had done our we had done the work. It just was organizing. It was me sorting right. through things, organizing, formatting. And Katie did go through this and double check everything for me to um, to do for due diligence. Um, so. You know, this is le legitimately, um, this is sort of like the digital version of the folder that would go with the bill, I would say. I don't know if I, I should say that because there might be other stuff in that folder, but it's, yeah. it's like. It's, 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 it's giving links to the, do to the documents that are referenced right. in the, as the source documents. Yeah. And I will say that I don't think this is a bad practice for the legislature to do in general. Like if there's going to be findings moving forward maybe they should be digitally available for people like this. Maybe it's just a good practice. It's a little extra work, but it's increasing right. transparency. So I'll stop, Don. Okay, thank you. Um, so it's 926. I think we should stop for the morning and go to the floor because uh, the, the speaker does appreciate us being there promptly. Uh, we will come back to our committee. Um, can we come back immediately after the floor? I think that's the plan. Uh, we'll come back immediately after the floor and we'll figure out what we're, our next step is at that point, but our.